Hi guys, welcome back to Classic hi fi Reviews. Today is the day we are diving into the world of Nakamichi. I've been collecting some Nakamichi decks myself over the last five years and um, I came across uh, this 480 um, just recently. I have fixed a number of 480, 481, 482, and 580 and 680 cassette decks. They have all something that is the same and that is the mechanism that is in, in these devices. So this is um, a basic two-head cassette deck. There's no BIOS adjustment or anything, but it's a dual capstan uh, deck uh, and these transport, uh, as even his bigger brothers are having the same, are really good transports. Um, and also um, what you definitely want to have is the uh, playback and record heads that Nakamichi has been using because its performance is just outstanding and overall the design of these cassette decks is always towards best possible music production, best possible sound and in my experience having been servicing different cassette decks over the period of the past four or five years I was always surprised how amazing and how much better the Nakamichi decks sound and there are really not that many from other manufacturers that are on par in the performance with these Nakamichis. Um, that said, there's always stuff that I've been missing on Nakamichi cassette decks, so even like the, the later models do not have uh, convenience functions like music search for example, um, which is something that that I do like to use when I'm listening to a tape and, and I want to skip one or two tracks. It's something that uh, uh, Nakamichi never integrated and stayed away from. Um, they concentrated more on really those functions that have an effect on, on the performance and on the, on the quality of the recording and the quality of the playback. So Adimus adjustments, intelligent bias adjustments, um, and other ideas around that. Well, for this deck, we don't have that. We, we don't have any bias adjustments. Um, it's a two-head deck, so we, we don't have, have the third head. We can't listen to what we have recorded. We can only listen to the input signal. And this is uh, the, the smallest deck in the 480 series. So the 481 is a three-head cassette deck. Um, but as far as I recall, the 481 um, has a separate uh, record head, but you don't have the option to listen to the actual recording. You would still listen to the source. Um, I think that was a bit of, of a marketing idea behind that, because the 482, um, the highest one in this series, is a three-head cassette deck, obviously, as well. And with this, you have the ability to listen to the recording instead of listening to the input signal. Um, these decks um, commonly have one issue, and uh, I have seen the same issue with, with the 580s, and I am quite amazed uh, that this 480 does not have that problem. And the problem is the door. In all these decks uh, that I've gotten so far, I was not able to open the door or somebody tried to force open the door because the eject button wasn't working. And they have like a, a bit of a weird mechanism in there because what has to be triggered to open the door is on this side of the deck and the eject button is here. Yeah, So there is some, some wire um, that's going through a tube to this other side here and it's it's pulling something and there's constantly some tension on the plastic piece and that used to break off and, and then you would be in the situation that you can't open the door. Obviously when you remove the cover and you get here you can open the door but you also have to come up with some ideas how to fix it that your eject button will work again. Again here the eject button works. Yeah? So that's that's really great news. Um, I haven't tried anything honestly uh, on this deck. Um, it's it's quite uh, dusty and dirty. When I got it, I just parked it for the moment because uh, I wanted to do the repair then uh, on video and share that with you guys because my suspicion will be that the um, capstan belt uh, will need some replacement. Um, lubrication is always a good idea and maybe it needs something else, we don't know yet. 
And even though when the capstan belt would still do something, I would still replace it uh, because this deck is uh, released, I believe, in 1982. Um, so it will be fairly old and um, it wouldn't be up to specs. And um, a capstan belt that is too loose, that also applies for weight to tight, will negatively impact WoW and Flutter. And we want to check then on this deck when we are done with it where we are with uh, with bow and flutter so we can measure that um, and should have an idea and uh, and also draw our conclusions if there's anything from an electrical point of view that we want to do um, to to restore and improve the performance of this deck so let's uh, let's try to uh, power it up put in a tape and see what it does okay so power is hooked up let's turn it on I don't see much, I don't see light or anything. This button seems to be pressed halfway in. Okay, let's try a tape. We got here, we got the, here we go, 91 various artists. Okay, let's do that. And we hit play. And we do have some live here. So it lights up. And we can hear the capsule mortar is spinning, but there's no movement at all. There is some movement with rewind, which is a good sign. And fast forward wouldn't engage. So um, the capsule build is, uh, is not required um, to have uh, forward and uh, rewind working. Um, so we will also need to look at the idle attire inside this deck, and I do believe I have replacement here. So if we have to replace that as well, looking at the rewind, I'm pretty sure that that might be the case. We will do that as well. Okay, so um, that's what we have established. Um, no playback. Um, there is a hint of rewind working. There is nothing happening at uh, fast forward. Um, we hear some motor spinning, which is a good sign. And um, what happens next, obviously, is we have to remove the top cover and have a look inside the deck. And you might have then already your first little surprise when you see once I have opened it. Okay, so this surprise here a bit is that actually the circuit board is installed upside down. So if we want to do some work on the circuit board, we definitely have to remove the bottom plate as well um, to get access uh, to the components. And from the mechanism, it is also advisable to remove the bottom plate so that will make our life a little bit easier. So we can either try to do this while the device is installed inside the deck or we can remove the entire transport and separate it on the bench and replace a capstan from there. And here you can see actually the belt. The belt is still there and it also goes over the pulley from the motor. So in theory we should have a bit more uh, action um, than what we have seen before. So we will have another test what's going to happen then on the cuffs inside here. Um, and here we can see the, the big um, idle attire. And it looks like it turned into something like a hard material. It's no longer rubbery, which makes it easy then to spin the two pickups. And that will be our problem here as well. Okay, so let's do this again. Um, we remove the front cover and we see if the capstan is spinning or if the capstan belt is pulling something or nothing so I hit play again sorry I have to turn it on for that obviously no 
But interestingly, rewind is working not quite well. Fast forward as well. Okay. Seems like that the um, the bridge here is not completely engaging. So that's a different issue actually. So we need to see um, why this is not happening. And um, there is another small belt uh, responsible for that, for this kind of movement. I call this belt the logic control belt. And um, so we will need to have a look at that belt um, to check um, if he is still there. I think he is because it moves a little bit, but probably because it has been sitting so long in its place, uh, it is completely and totally out of shape. Um, it's usually has in like like a teardrop shape and uh, um, then it wouldn't start spinning again and, and doing the full round around the actual um, circuit that he has to take. Um, so let's have a look at that and see if we then can get the, the bridge down here moving um, and uh, what kind of result we are having. Okay, so in the beginning we might have drawn some quick conclusions, um, but now what we have to do is we have to get on and, and fix the actual problem. So let's replace um, that belt. Um, for us it's a lot easier to do that when we have access from the backside as well. So let's remove the bottom cover. Okay. I always appreciate it when there is a bottom cover that can be removed. A lot of decks where there is no way to access the other side of the components, even though when they are not installed upside down, you still would need to get them to, to the soldering part. And if that is not possible, that means you have to totally disassemble the deck and uh, deal with a free on your desk, circuit board, and troubleshooting like that. Okay, so here we are. Um, here we have now a good view of all the um, electronics. Um, we will also have a look later at the transport in the door mechanism, because it's a common fold, and uh, I want to cover these common folds then in this video as well. So when you come across some of these decks, um, that you have an idea, um, what might be required to get it going again. Okay, so here we have a good view um, of that belt. Um, so here is the motor pulley and here the, the big wheel that is then driving um, the logic control, the cam gear and everything. So we can just pull it off like that. And again, there is no additional disassembly required. And here is the belt, and uh, here you see what, what I've been talking about. Um, so the belt has now taken on this shape, and whatever happens, it it won't be going into the one or the other direction because of this, this bend here, which is now fixed inside the belt. Okay, so let's get a replacement belt and see how the deck works. Okay, so let's get a replacement belt and see if this fixes our issue. Okay, so I usually have stock of a variety of belts. Um, these are here um, 1.2 millimeter wide ones. Um, and uh, I don't think um, that that is ideal because it definitely looks thicker. But I also got a variety of 1.4 millimeter ones, and that looks pretty good. Um, from the length, probably this uh, this 40 by 1.4, or is it 43? Would do a good job. So maybe we get one out of the 43 size. We rather want to have it a little bit too tight than having it loose. Okay. So 43 seems to be a bit bigger than the original one. So we don't want that. 
So the next closest I do have is 40. So let's use 40. And yeah, that looks pretty close. This one is a little bit tighter, smaller. That's what we would expect. And now it's time to install it. Okay, I'm just trying to do this from here. I hope that works on camera. Just put that down here. Okay. And once it's on the other side around the wheel, which I hope is the case now, I can just pull it up and put it on that pulley up here. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So we are done. We have replaced this belt. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we have uh, replaced the logic control <coughs> belt. Um, I have reconnected the deck to power and um, let's see what happens now when we are hitting the play button. Yay, it works. So that was definitely the um, solution to the problem. Yeah, works reliably. So that's really great news. Um, to my surprise, also uh, fast forward and rewind starts to work. Um, maybe in the beginning, in the first test, it was all kind of a little bit frozen up because it hasn't been operated in decades. <clears throat> it sounds a bit like the uh, um, the idler tire is not 100% uh, round, it makes a bit of this noise, um, but that's pretty common um, on these decks, so I know the sound of the noise very well. This might not really require any any further um, inspection on that part. Okay, but still we want to give this deck a good service now, we, we got it working. Um, what we can do next now is um, still take the uh, tape transport apart and uh, we want to lubricate both of the capstans and we want to replace the capstan belt because it was slipping uh, already a little bit in our first test when the bridge was not coming up and um, it looks from just just visually it actually looks pretty good um, but my expectation would be that it requires replacement anyway and um, yeah i think you guys will enjoy to look a little bit more into this classic um, Nakamichi transport anyway. Okay, to get access to um, the screws that are attaching the transport to the frame, we have to remove the front cover first. So that's fairly easy. There are just a few screws on the top and on the bottom. And then we can just pull it off. There are no buttons here in the way, thankfully. Maybe these, we will see. Um, and uh, then we can have uh, access to the other screws and we can just pull out the transport. Okay. These are the three from the bottom. So what's missing is the top. And I hope that with the work that we are doing to the deck now, we can improve the rather poor wow and flutter performance that we have just seen. Okay, here we have the whole arm that wants to come out. That's also fine with me. So here we have a naked Nakamichi 480. It's also a bit dusty here. We can clean up that. Okay, um, so here's the screw. And they were so nice <laughs> and also left off the pass. Uh, through that display here. We can also remove that. It's it's not that difficult. Maybe we should. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 
I think it's a whole assembly. So we also have to remove the buttons from the back. It's getting a bit more involved than I initially thought. So we do have some excess now, even though it's not much, but I think we can live with that. It's maybe not a good idea. Got a few of the cable ties here. Looking at the cable ties, um, these black ones, they do not look factory or original. I think somebody else was already in here. Did some service to this deck way back. So we should be able then to, to unplug the whole transport and we can do that now. There's no harm in it before we unscrew it. So let's take a So we can't get to the screw here in the corner, so we have to loosen this guy here. It's holding the headphone jack in place, so then I can push that on the side a little bit. It gives me access to the third screw here on the bottom. And this is screw number four. They are all exact the same length, so you can't mix them up. Okay, so I had to unscrew this guy here as well, because otherwise uh, I would not be able to move the transport out of the out of the of the tape deck. It seems now everything is loose. Um, we still have to unhinge the record switch. So this is a mechanical thing here. Should be easy enough. Okay, so hopefully we got it now. I can pull it out. I unplugged everything. And here we go. Now that means we don't need this anymore. Put that on the side. We just need this. The beautiful Takamichi classic transport. Okay, it seems I was praising the day a little bit too early. Yeah, you can see the beginning of the door problem. Um, so that plastic bit here keeps the the brass part in place that maintains the tension on the Bowden uh, that you need to be able to open the door. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we have to do is we have to glue it back together. So we are kind of lucky that, that it's still there. So the screw on the right, uh, when I when I undo that a bit, um, I can um, get some glue in between both pieces, both halves um, of the plastic part. Um, I'll wait until it's um, glued back together, and then with the with the help of the epoxy, it should be a strong enough bond to fix the issue. Also, we don't want to screw the screw in too tight; it's not necessary. And uh, okay, now I zoom out a little bit, that you get an idea at what part of the transport you have to look for to locate. Uh, that uh, that that problem and and the corresponding piece in question, um, yeah, and then probably it's a good idea to give you guys a bit of an, a tour um, on the transport. You can see here both pinch rollers and the head. Uh, we got the two flywheels, each one for its capstan, and um, and the capstan belt, which doesn't seem to be. Uh, too bad in shape and here on the right side we have the belt that we just replaced so the logic control belt um, that part is actually solved so that's great and uh, this is a part of the mechanism that opens the door so this is pushing that bowden and it goes all the way 
and then ends up uh, in the part uh, that is that is broken now and, and pulls in the the actual door mechanism and here again you can see it and here we got a nice view of the head and the pinch rollers pinch rollers do look pretty good um, so there is no replacement required here on this deck Another thing that we want to change is the counter belt. Um, to get access to the counter belt, we have to remove these two screws um, to remove the back plate of the transport, and that gives us easy access to it and should be a quick swap. On the back side of the transport, we see the three motors the capstan one, then the motor that is moving the pickups, and this is the third motor that is in charge for the transport mechanism for the logic control. And to get access um, to the capstan belt, uh, we would need to remove this back plate here. And it's just held in place by four screws, um, so we will be loosening these four screws and, um, and get on with replacing the capstan belt. So the top right one uh, of the four screws is the one that is a little bit longer than the other screws. Here we go, number one. And just three more to go. And these are the four screws, as you can tell. Three are the same, and then we just got the one from the top right, which is the longer one. Okay, and here we got our capstan belt. And uh, what I noticed is then the grease here on this um, pressure points for the, uh, for the um, capstans. It also looked like uh, really old. We need to replace that as well. And we'll do that and by looking at the capstan what I notice is that this also has a bit of a shape in it uh, you can see that here on the bottom from the on the pulley of the motor definitely something that would contribute um, negatively to wow and flutter so it's a good idea to replace it um, looks original to me this build it also has good tension so it's kind of a bit of a pity because we just replacing it because of that but it has to happen with the belt now out of its way, we can pull out the flywheels with the capstans. Um, by touching it, I can I can tell um, there is a bit of grease on them, a bit of oil, but it's really not much. Um, so definitely um, oiling them is a very good idea anyway. And uh, you really want to be careful with these. The last thing you want is to drop them on the floor. If they are bent, uh, then you are pretty much screwed. For the oil, we will be using a very good capstan oil that is also uh, being used by Revox. It's the PDP 65. So it seems that the original belt is an 80 by 0.5 by 5. Um, I only found an an 80 by 0.5 by 4 millimeter. Um, so that's not exactly the same belt. Um, so I measured them in the uh, in thickness and the uh, four millimeter belt is about 0.1 millimeter thicker than the original one. Um, so that might make up for the uh, missing uh, one millimeter in width. But that's something we will find out uh, when we install it and give it a spin. If we are not happy with the result, uh, I will go and order one that is 5mm wide. Next thing is cleaning the capstans, that means getting rid of the old grease uh, on the back of them. For that I'm just using isopropyl alcohol and then for the capstan itself um, I will be using something stronger than that where I had good experience with. I will be cleaning them with acetone. And of course on the pads we're also getting rid of the old grease. 
For the capstans, I like to use something stronger, um, a bit of acetone, because no harm can be done on these and it will definitely remove all residues of old tape. Just make sure when you work with these guys that you are really careful. You don't want to drop them. For the oil we are using the excellent PDP 65 that is also recommended by Revox. Okay, so time to put uh, the capstans back into the transport mechanism. We're doing this in reverse order. Everybody gets his squeeze of PDP 65. Okay, while we're just at lubricating and before we install the caps and bell, let's also not forget the pressure pads. So we are lubricating them with a bit of lithium grease here. Okay, now it's finally time for the bell. That can be quite fiddly, but what I like to do is I like to hook it up at some point uh, within the transport and makes it easier than to just have it snap into place once most of the screws are tightened back in. And don't forget, the long screw goes in the top right corner. Okay, so we got some play left and that's necessary to do our trick with the capstan belt to move it into its final resting place. We're shifting it off its temporary mounting spot. And that's it. Now it's sitting on the motor pulley where it belongs. So we can tighten up the screws and move on to our next task. So here again we see our problem spot, the broken off plastic um, that will cause an issue opening our cassette door. Uh, first step to repair it, what I will be doing is I will pull out the screw a little bit um, to not break off the plastic piece completely. I'm holding it in place uh, with some pliers and after that I have a bit of uh, wiggle room between both halves of the part. And that's ideal to get some glue in between and as glue we will be using um, some epoxy. Um, so I'm just mixing up really a tiny amount and apply it onto that spot and after a while of curing uh, we should be good to go. Holding it up for a couple of minutes until it's bonded um, and then uh, we can be moving on um, to our next problem zone. For this purpose, if it totally broken off on both ends, I also designed a little part that I glue into that spot. Um, you see an image of that here. But in our uh, case it was not necessary. The epoxy cured well and made a good bond and that looks pretty good. Okay, we also need to give the pinch rollers a bit of a good clean and treat it with some rubber restorer. So I'll be doing it later. What we want to do now is replace the counter belt. Um, to uh, replace the counter belt, you need to uh, remove the back cover. Um, that's only possible when the um, button pad as well as the uh, VU meters are out of the way. Otherwise, it's difficult to reach the screw. Um, and here you can see the belt, it's just a, a long one millimeter belt um, and um, it's very easy to replace, especially when the transport is not installed. If the transport is installed, it's quite difficult to get to the right side of it and, and get it in. So I recommend if you're planning to do this, do it when the transport is on your bench and it's easy to access here from the right side. So here comes the old belt out. We're installing a new 80 by 1.2 belt and the installation is pretty straightforward.
Okay, we're getting close to put it all back together. Before I put it back together, I took care of the pinch rollers and I also cleaned the back of the pickups that gets in touch with the idler tire with some isopropyl. So that they're nice and grippy and I also treated the idler tire with some rubber restorer. The back panel, as you can see here, was also cleaned and after everything then went back into its spot, the deck performed actually quite well. So did the speed calibration and it's pretty spot on and we ended up with a wow and flutter around 0.07. I call that a success uh, with using the original pinch rollers. I don't think that we are, would be getting a lot better than that um, and overall I'm quite happy with the result. And that wraps up our Nakamichi 480 service. I hope you find some useful information in the video and uh, enjoyed it. And again, as usual, thanks for watching.